Hello. <laughs> Hey you guys, it's Erin at Eat Move Rest and welcome back or if it's your first time visiting this channel then welcome to all things Eat Move Rest. So today as I had promised on Instagram I am sharing my halfway Q&A. So this is my 20th week of my vegan plant powered pregnancy and I asked you guys to submit questions as far as what you want to know, where I'm at, how I'm feeling, what I've been doing, supplements food wise, all of the above, maybe some exercise. So I'm gonna grab my phone and I'm gonna get through these questions with you guys because there were a lot of good ones. So number one is, have you thought of any baby names yet? And the answer to that is yes. So I've got on my notes here, a list of boy names and girl names, but we haven't really settled on just one for a boy or a girl yet, but I will say the girl list is longer. I have a slight inclination that it might be a girl, but I don't really know for sure. All I can say is that our boy names and girl names are short. I like three letter names. I like them to be short and sweet. And Dusty and I have pretty much the same taste, so we've agreed on almost all the names. We like things that are a little bit unique and eclectic, but not too crazy. So if you guys have any like short three, four letter names, drop them in the comments below. I would love to hear. And on that note, if you guys are into these vegan pregnancy and what I eat in a day videos, give this video a thumbs up. And if you haven't already hit that subscribe button up in the corner, join us here at the Eat Move Rest fam. We would love to have you join us. And make sure you've got that bell click that'll turn notifications on. You'll get alerted whenever we put out new content here on this channel. So like I said, leave me some love in the comments below. Maybe some baby boy and girl names. Maybe if you think it's going to be a boy or a girl, just let me know below. And make sure you stay up to date with Dusty and I daily on Instagram. We're always on stories. We're posting all the time. At Aaron Stanzik, at DB Stanzik. So let's get back to these questions. Okay, <laughs> I'm back. So, I got hungry. I know we were only one question deep, but I had to make myself a pitaya bowl because they're so good. All you do for these is frozen bananas, frozen dragon fruit. I also added in some frozen raspberries and a scoop of Sun Warrior Vanilla Warrior Blend, and it is to live for. Mmm. Baby loves it. Let's get back to our questions. Question number two is, what are you most nervous, anxious, and scared about in regards to becoming a mama? So I guess the main thing for me is, I'm just really nervous about maintaining a healthy balance between running a business, being a small business owner slash side hustler, <laughs> and being a good mom that's always there to tend to my child's every needs. I want to just be able to keep the balance because I'm of the mindset that you don't have to sacrifice yourself and everything that you are passionate about in order to be a good mom. I think that there is something to be said for all of the strong, powerful women out there today who are fulfilling their dreams, making their dreams come true, and taking care of a family. So my biggest fear is just learning to develop a healthy balance between the two and also just being being good enough at it I guess it's I guess it's a super common fear to just feel like you're not doing enough or you're not making the right decisions you know do I vaccinate or do I not do I send my kid to private school or public school so just really being not so hard on myself and just allowing myself to make the best possible decisions at the right times with Dusty. So yeah, just to just to kind of keep my wits about me and not to get too caught up in all of the the craziness, feeling like I'm not doing enough. Question number three. Moving on. What are your plans as far as breastfeeding slash bottle feeding goes? So Yes, I am planning on breastfeeding. From all of the research that's been done and everything that I've learned, breastfeeding is hugely important to the health of your baby. Um, a lot of people have said, well, if you're vegan, um, is breastfeeding considered vegan? 
Yes, for a species to drink its own mother's milk is 100% natural. There is nothing non-vegan about that. At birth, vaginal birth delivery is said to be the healthiest for your baby because your baby gets coated in, it's kind of gross, but gets coated in all of that stuff that actually gets into their system and helps their, build their immune system. And the same is true for breastfeeding. It actually helps build your baby's immune system. It helps them to gain that good, healthy weight. Not to mention it's going to help you if you're worried about the weight coming off after you deliver. The amount of energy and effort it takes for your body to produce milk is a lot. So it's gonna really bump up your metabolism. And from what my mom has said and from what everyone else who has breastfed has said, it just totally, the weight falls right off. You're hungry all the time but the baby just keeps, the more they drink your milk, the more the weight just comes right off. So it benefits you and it benefits baby. So yes, we will be breastfeeding, or I will. <laughs> I wish that it could be a male role as well, but no such luck. I have yet to learn about breast pumps and all of that craziness, but I'm sure I'll learn in due time. If you know anything about it, let me know in the comments. So like I said, I'm at week 20 and almost to week 21, which means I'm halfway already, and I thought that maybe the bump would be bigger by now. Now that's not to say there isn't a bump. I'll show you guys at the end. There's definitely a bump, but I'm surprised that you can get halfway through pregnancy in the middle of summertime, still wearing a swimsuit, still wearing your same shorts and clothes and all of that, and nobody on the streets would ever know. And my mom has even said, you know, up till month seven when she was pregnant with me nobody really noticed until you know finally she popped and you could really tell um, by month seven eight nine so it's kind of comforting though because you don't you know that you don't have to be uncomfortable for as long as you think moving on our next question is your unhealthiest pregnancy craving so far and did you give in to it um yes i did have a super unhealthy pregnancy craving and yes i did give in to it now you're probably wondering if it was a vegan craving or not and i will say it was cheese pizza but we were in la and we were at a vegan restaurant so it had vegan cheese on it it was so so good we were with friends just having such a good time of course they gave into the craving it was so worth it so on a day-to-day -day basis i haven't been having extreme cravings like that but you know, from time to time, if it's a special occasion, like why not treat yourself pregnant or not? So I don't think that there's, I don't think you should honor every single craving that you have, whether you're pregnant or not. I think some of them might be your body speaking to you saying, hey, you might need more of a certain mineral or nutrient. Other cravings might just be like, oh, well, pizza's good. Donuts are awesome. Why not indulge? So I don't really always listen to my cravings. I try more to go with my gut listen to my intuition like how is this going to make me feel after the fact is it actually going to be nourishing me then maybe it's a craving I should satisfy on the same token sometimes like I said it's okay to, to cave to those to those crazy cravings but when you're pregnant I don't think it should be an excuse to go overboard and get extreme with it so that's just my take okay how did you know you were ready for kids and this one's really simple and short and sweet I didn't know I was ready. We, I wouldn't say that I was ready, and from the people I've talked to, there's no such thing as being ready. It just, you know, you get ready when you have to get ready. So Dusty and I weren't actively trying to get pregnant, but we also weren't trying not to get pregnant. So we were just trying to live our lives super organically, like the way that we eat, and it just happened. So I'm not gonna say that I was just all rainbows and sunshine right away. There was a big component of fear initially, but you know, you just get yourself ready for whatever life event comes your way when it's time. Um, a lot of times I'm like, well, I wish I would have known A, B, and C then so I could have been prepared. But it's like, I think God kind of prepares you in due time for whatever comes your way. So I wasn't ready for college when I entered into college, but I prepared myself as I went. I learned as I went and the same is true for anything your kids graduating college for getting married you know I didn't know a thing about planning a wedding but I just took it step by step day by day things got done we had our dream wedding 
And so I'm kind of trying to take it the same way with expecting and becoming a mom, becoming a parent. Um, Dusty and I are just so blessed to have each other as a team to help each other. Um, you know, in some aspects, he's more ready than I am. So we're just taking it day by day, like I said, and learning as we go and trying not to be too impatient with ourselves or hard on ourselves about it. Are you going to find out the gender of the baby? So another short and sweet that I'll probably get long-winded on is no, we are waiting. Our due date is December 22, three days after my birthday, three days before Christmas, and you know, give or take a couple days, we could have a birth matching birthday baby or a Christmas baby, which is kind of exciting. But we just think either way, it's going to be such an amazing um, experience to just kind of hold out and wait, um, have a little bit of the suspense, and it'll make such an amazing surprise for Christmas. And, um, you know, we're kind of okay with just shopping for gender neutral things anyways. And I will say we just had our 20 week ultrasound. So we just got done with our 20 week ultrasound and uh, midwife appointment. It went great. Baby looks healthy. We're gonna show you guys a few images. What do you think? Hmm, super cute and fun. Yeah, I didn't, I didn't expect it to be that involved of an ultrasound, so it was kind of exciting to see all of the different angles and images. So that was the full anatomy scan and it was just awesome to see. We did have to remind the ultrasound tech, we don't want to know the sex, so she said she'll steer clear of that area. We got a big printout of all of the different, um, like a few different face shots and feet, the cutest little feet, so I will insert photos here for you guys to check out. And we just love, love, love this one profile photo. He's got the, he or she has this cute little button nose and we're like, whose nose is that? <laughs> So, okay, they said that this is the placenta, this is baby, and his little legs were like smushed up in there. The head is facing down, that could change, but they said it's a good sign. The so it's super cute and it was so fun and exciting to see like, just, we saw the heart beating, we saw the brain, we saw the spinal cord the bones in the arms and just everything. Everything looked great and healthy and size-wise, baby is about the size of a mango. We decided that it's got a big belly so it takes after me <laughs> and it's got a tiny brain so it takes after Dusty. Oh. <laughs> just kidding. I went and grabbed two books that have really been helpful to me so far. So I have been getting a lot of questions about what resources am I using? So there is um, Raise Vegan. You can find them on Instagram and Vegan Pregnancy and Parenting. They're connected. Um, they do have a publication, a monthly um, magazine that comes out, so check that out. But these are the two books. Ina May's Guide to Childbirth. I was totally new to her, but Ina May Gaskin is a midwife who a lot of people recommended reading her work, watching her documentary. Um, She's just like the mother of natural childbirth. So this has been super helpful because there's been a lot of things like vaccinations and just different delivery methods, different decisions to make that I've been searching in the index and it's been super helpful. And then the other one is, so if you're a Clueless fan like me, <laughs> you're gonna love this. It's by Alicia Silverstone. She's been a long time vegan and animal rights activist. This book is incredible. It's called The Kind Mama. I'll put the links to these below in the description, but I really, really love this one because she gives really sound advice. And for every question, she breaks it down into like the OBGYN's answer, the midwife's answer, and there's like one other. Um, and she's got recipes in there and so much. It takes you on through childbirth to childcare. So I recommend both of those books to help you get prepared. I've got more on my list that I haven't ordered yet. I've had tons of great recommendations. If you guys have any for me, put them below. I love checking out, out all that stuff. Okay, moving on. Do you have a gut feeling it's a boy or a girl? So my gut says girl. <laughs> Almost everybody thinks it's a girl. People are just like, how's baby girl? And Dusty thinks it's a girl. And we've gotten some girl gifts. And I'm not sure why, you know? So. Last night, Dusty and I were saying, it's probably gonna be a boy. We should get prepared for a boy because we think it's a girl. 
favorite raw meal ideas when you are feeling nauseous? Ooh, this is a good one. I would have to say this. My favorite raw foods when when I'm feeling kind of icky have been like super icy cold. Like it's all been about nice cream and smoothies or something like slushy um, and watermelon. Watermelon's another great thing. Super easy to digest sweet and crisp and cool and crunchy and satisfying and super hydrating so either that or a good smoothie bowl with a little bit of the sun warrior protein in it really hits the spot next question i love this you guys i hope you're enjoying have any ideas for vegan formula if moms can't produce breast milk Ooh, that's a good question so I haven't thought about that, but I do know there's a place here in Lincoln called Milkworks where you can get like breast pumps and all of your breastfeeding supplies. And I know that they do have a bank, so women who can breastfeed can pump extra and donate for mothers who can't. So I would look more into something like that. But as far as vegan formulas, I'm not entirely sure, but I probably should research that because that's a really good question. Ways to get greens in when feeling nauseous. I've had to get creative with that. I've heard that it's a pretty common aversion when you get pregnant to have aversions to greens. It's been really tough for me. I've had to learn not to be so hard on myself about it, but like the green salads have not, they've made me feel really icky. I haven't ever thrown up or anything, but instead I'm trying to get my greens in in other ways. So definitely still doing my morning green smoothies, sometimes putting an extra boost of barley grass juice powder in there, which I'll put the link below to the brand that I love. It's called Daily Green Boost. You can also find them on Instagram. Super awesome stuff. It's so good. Um, sometimes I'll just mix a tablespoon of it in with ice water, swirl it around, and you can't really take taste it. It's kind of just like an alkaline water. And then the other thing is juicing, doing some green juices. Dusty has been super helpful making me good green juices. And other than that, like I've been pretty okay with steamed greens. And I think that's probably plenty of greens throughout the day. So moving on to the next question. Is it harder to eat enough protein now that you're pregnant? And I would simply say no. Um, I'm still getting plenty of protein and I do the Sun Warrior vanilla protein, like I said, in smoothies a lot of times. I'll usually just do a half scoop and then I usually have two smoothies a day so I get a full scoop of that as an added supplement. But also I've been doing lots of grains, lots of beans, lots of lentils. Um, even the green smoothie in the morning, just with the greens alone and the fruit, you would be surprised how fast protein adds up with fruits and veggies. So as long as you're getting a varied diet, it's really diverse, and you're including those healthy whole grains, your bases should be more than covered. Moving on, do you have any weird vegan pregnancy cravings? So I've had a lot of pre uh, pregnancy craving questions. Um, I guess I've craved ramen noodles which was kind of weird so we did have like a healthy organic like vegan ramen noodle brand and I've had those a few times um, other than that like my pregnancy cravings have been super on point and healthy watermelon being my biggest craving but that's pretty much every summer anyways and just really juicy sweet water water dense fruits so like so here's my fruity delicious lunch They've got like, peaches, pineapples, mangoes, nectarines, grapes, just the normal summer, summer fruits and foods. I'm really glad to be pregnant in the summertime because those fruits have just really been helping me out when nothing else has sounded good. So I'm, I'm very thankful that I haven't had too weird of cravings. What are your thoughts on vaccinations? So I'm really conflicted and I need your guys' help leave them in the comments below. I still need to do more of my own research. I've talked to a handful of friends and like you guys might know, I come from a family of doctors. My dad is a family physician. So he is like vaccinate, vaccinate, vaccinate. And then I go to my chiropractor and he says, no vaccinations whatsoever, hands down the worst thing for your child. So I'm really conflicted and I've heard pros and cons on both sides. Next question, B12. B12, take B12 regardless, pregnant or not. So I'm gonna talk a little bit more about supplements in a minute here. Have you changed your diet now that you're pregnant? Other than leafy green salads being hit or miss, 
hasn't changed a whole lot. I will say dinner times, it's been difficult because I'm a heavy dinner eater. Like I eat a lot, a high volume amount of food. Um, and it used to be the leafy green salads, which was high volume, lower calorie, but now it's um, also a high volume, but also more calorie dense foods. And it's hard because there's not as much space in there as there was before. So a lot of times like I go to bed and I'm just like, oh, there's no room in here and I just feel really gross. So I'm trying to retrain myself to make my heaviest meal like midday, like it should be anyways. When your inner fire is the strongest and your body can really work through and really needs that fuel. So that's something I'm working through and I would recommend smaller meals throughout the day if you're pregnant and feeling the same. Don't wait till dinner. <laughs> foods or supplements you have to stay away from. So I do a lot of, I guess these aren't foods, but essential oils. I do a lot of essential oils and there are certain ones that you should steer clear from and certain ones that could be beneficial like lavender for example is going to be soothing. Peppermint's going to be great for nausea. Um, there are a handful that are just too potent that you probably shouldn't play around with when you're pregnant. I would do a quick search for that because I'm not an expert, but whenever I'm wondering, I, I do a quick search before I use it. Um, as far as foods and supplements, it's pretty simple because as soon as you go vegan, like, you're pretty much safe. Like, they always say don't eat sushi because of, like, the raw fish and all of that kind of stuff. Um, there's all kinds of things you're supposed to stay away from, but... As soon as you become pre or vegan, all of a sudden those things are off the table anyways. So I don't know of any foods that you're really supposed to steer that clear from. I will say supplement wise, all I've heard is if, you're used, if your body is used to using something before you became pregnant, it's probably okay to continue using it. But don't try to introduce too many new crazy things with superfoods like there are just so many, ashwagandha, maca, spirulina. Spirulina is a big one. If you're used to using it, use it. But if not, then maybe steer clear. So just don't try to implement too many new things. How many calories extra will you be eating? So this is an interesting one. You don't actually need as many extra calories as you might think, especially early on in your pregnancy. They actually say just two to 300 calories should cover your bases. And honestly, that's about what I've been doing. I've bumped it up from about like 2300 to like 2500 calories and I've been feeling great, feeling fine. I don't wake up in the middle of the night hungry. I usually go to bed satisfied. I usually wake up still feeling fine. I'm never, I never let myself get hungry basically. So I think that's one thing that's going to vary per person, but for the most part, like you don't have to eat as much extra as you would think. I would just say to listen to your body. Don't let yourself get too hungry angry, tired, or lonely. Final couple of questions. We've got three left. So back to supplements. I'm going to expand more on supplements and vegan pregnancy nutrition on another separate video because it's going to get long-winded. So let's move on. We've got two more questions. Best foods for morning sickness and or how did you combat first trimester nausea? So my first trimester nausea actually lasted until about week 18 or 19. So it's been just a couple of weeks where I've finally felt like myself again. But as far as, it, as um, combating the nausea goes, so there's a couple of different things. Number one is just to really stick to bland foods. Like I said, the ramen noodles. So just like a brothy, salty water with some noodles in it. Um, plain bread, plain oatmeal, really bland foods, bananas. So on that note, there's something called the brat diet, which is supposed to help an unsettled um, stomach or help combat nausea. So the brat diet is bananas, rice, white rice, um, applesauce, and toast. Toast is another good one. So just really bland foods that are going to fill you up and at least give you calories. But if you feel like you're not able to get down or keep down healthy whole foods, then for sure I would be supplementing with a prenatal and making sure that you're taking in enough nutrients. That hasn't been the case for me, even through the nausea, I've, I've been able to tough it out. The th uh, foods that have helped the most have been, like I said, like watermelon or super icy cold smoothies um, that I can, you know, disguise green powders in or like healthy omega-3 chia seeds, things like that. So I really like smoothies. It's helped me so, so much. 
smoothies and nice cream for the win. <laughs> okay, you guys, are you ready for the number one question? Have you ever lost your period and how did you get it back? So my plain and simple answer for this one is yes, I have lost my period. It was for almost a year. It wasn't the first time it had happened. And I am going to expand on that in another video coming up. So stay tuned for that because obviously I got my period back. I got my hormones in check. I did it naturally and I was on birth control for several years. So if any of this rings a bell with any of you, if you're looking forward to the answers to that and or the vegan pregnancy nutrition and supplements, those are going to be two separate videos coming out soon. Side note. These are like my last pair of shorts that I can still wear because they are total mom shorts. But you can see it's about time where I won't be able to wear these anymore either. Okay, you guys, so as promised, this video would not be complete without a baby bump shot. So let's do that quick. We are at week 20, almost 21, so halfway through. And there is definitely a little bit of a bump for me. <laughs> okay, so that wraps it up, you guys. Thank you so much for your questions. I hope you enjoyed listening to the answers. If you like this vegan pregnancy Q&A, give this video a thumbs up. Like I said, if you haven't already, join us here at the Eat, Move, Rest fam. Hit that subscribe button and click that bell so your notifications are turned on so you'll get alerted whenever we put out new videos here on this channel. Leave me some love in the comments below. Let me know what you thought. Let me know your experience or if you have any recommendations for me on vaccinations, good books, good resources, good supplement facts I should know. Let me know below. And like I said, follow me daily on Instagram. I'm always active on there at Erin Stanzik and Dusty at DB Stanzik. And until next time, eat, move, rest, your best. If you're pregnant, you should be looking forward to a couple more videos I've got coming on vegan pregnancy, nutrition, and supplements and how I got my period back naturally. So until next time, eat, move, rest, your best. Bye, guys.